true believers, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, with the recent announcement of Ben Affleck being cast as Batman in the latest of the DC Comics movie franchise, I've decided to offer an addendum to my review of the movie Daredevil, which was Ben Affleck's last comic book outing. Only this time, I've decided to look at the director's cut, which went straight to DVD in 2004. The director's cut of this movie includes approximately 30 minutes of new material, mostly pertaining to a subplot featuring rapper Coolio, whose character was framed for a murder he didn't commit, as well as some extended scenes from the theatrical edition. But before we get to the director's cut of Daredevil, let's investigate what a director's cut actually is, and how it relates to movies in general. Traditionally, the final edit of a film will go through three different stages. First, the rough cut, which is the entire shot movie as scripted. Secondly, comes the editor's cut. This is what's technically meant by director's cut, as it reflects the director's vision and flow of the story. Third and final comes the final cut, which is where the studio approves or notes the cut, adding extra scenes for clarity, or removing scenes that are too graphic or explicit to get a lower rating to play to more people. This is where disharmony and controversy can sometimes creep into the process. For example, a good, thought-provoking film with an intentionally ambiguous ending can sometimes be ruined if the studio mandates instead that the film has a traditional happy ending even if this new ending is completely at odds with what went before it. More controversial are the director's cuts that aren't. Ridley Scott, for example, was quite happy with the final cut of Alien when it was first released in 1979. The 2003 special edition re-release, as Scott himself noted on the commentary for the DVD, was merely a marketing stunt, and either version could be considered the true vision. Of course, Ridley Scott's most famous director's cut is that of the 1982 cyberpunk classic Blade Runner. But we won't be getting into the long and convoluted story of that particular movie today. Nor will we be discussing the works of Tinto Brass, whose movies are often known to exist in multiple versions. No, what we will be discussing today is the director's cut of Daredevil. So let's dispense with the preambles and get to it! This is a major improvement over the theatrical cut. Will I still have... personal dislike for Jennifer Garner? The much diminished focus on the romance, coupled with the much needed subplot concerning a dope smoking fall guy and the call girl for whose murder he's framed, serves not only to pad out this movie, but also to flesh it out, putting the meat of a movie on the bones of the theatrical version. Colin Farrell's demented, wild-eyed assassin Bullseye is pitch perfect, and Jon Favreau's Foggy Nelson is a perfect comic foil to Affleck's Murdoch. Oh sure, it's still not perfect. The romance, while greatly reduced in focus, still remains forced and hammy. The comedic parts of the new subplot don't entirely work for me. Coolio is a doped up small timer yielding surprisingly little humour in my own opinion. Still, the movie is greatly improved by the extra material, the flow is much smoother, and you actually get a feel for the title character. Now, in my original review of Daredevil, I asked, isn't it time you gave Daredevil another chance? And concluded, no, it wasn't. Having seen the director's cut, I can safely say that yes, it is time you gave Daredevil the director's cut another chance. And before I leave you today, if you are wondering what my opinion on the whole Batfleck controversy is, I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic on the casting of Ben Affleck as the next incarnation of the Dark Knight. Based on his performance here, he could be quite good as a Batman. 
being that Batman and Daredevil are quite thematically similar. He may not be the hero we want right now, but Justice is blind. Blind as a bat. I've been Funky Monkey, and I'm reminding you all to stay safe out there, and don't have nightmares. So long, folks.